WNDS Sports and Plant State Megabucks present Candlepin Skins. It's bowling with a whole new twist as New England's best bowlers battle for cash prizes in every box. Candlepin Skins is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to the Londonderry Bowling Center here in Londonderry, New Hampshire. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. So glad you could join us once again here for Candlepin Skins. You know, we stress every week, Dan, that uh, the four bowlers compete individually here on this format. But you could say that Rich Lottie and Bob Mazur have made a pretty good team because they've been dominating the last several weeks. That's right. Rich is back for his eighth week in a row, I believe, and, and Bob his seventh. Uh, and that's unheard of in this, in this type of game. But that shows you how important the game of Candlepins still is, even in the Skins format. All right. Rich and Bob back to give it a go once again. And they'll be joined this week by Rich Clark and Gary Carrington. And these are our rules for Candlepin Skins, as we always like to remind you. In case you're new to the format, the bowlers do compete individually, one box at a time. In each box, the high score will win the skin. The dollar value assigned to that box. The dollar value increases and carries over with ties for the high score. The top two in total pinfall will come back the following week. You can ask Bob and Rich about that. They've been doing it every week for the last couple of months, it seems. Here are the cash value amounts now. Boxes one, two, and three are worth $10 each. The next three boxes are worth $15 each. Boxes seven, eight, and nine worth $25 each. And in each of our two games here on Candlepin Skins, the 10th box is worth $50. And, of course, ultimately, some of those boxes are worth a lot more than that with the carryovers. We're going to come back and see if Bob Mazur and Rich Lottie can keep it going. Rich Clark and Bo uh, Gary Carrington trying to stop them, and we'll be back on Candlepin Skins in a minute. Well, here they are, coming to the lanes, Rich Lottie and Bob Mazur, the two guys that have been dominating here on Candlepin Skins. Right, and I uh, should correct myself at the beginning of the show. I don't make many mistakes, but uh, <laughs> once in a while I do, and, and it's uh, huh. seven weeks in a row for that gentleman who just threw the strike, and six for Bob Mazur. And I, he almost matched the strike. That's right. I looked at Doug note, really, and I figured Doug couldn't be smart enough to add one in that they're appearing today, so I was saying, this is their eighth and seventh. Well, it's not good. Doug is one up on me all the time. Spare for Bob Mazur. So we're off and running with a strike and a spare, and here is the replay of that strike by Rich Lottie. Now Rich Clark. With the red trunks, red shirt. <laughs> And Gary Karen, they're in lavender. Oh, yeah. Come on. Well, well, the seven and eight for Gary after Rich will try and make his spare. He does not. Very quickly, Rich Lottie wins the first skin with that strike. Well, that's you know, a $10 skin for Rich. You'll notice on the scoreboard to differentiate between the two Riches, it's Rich L and Rich C. It's nothing to do with my spelling. <laughs> <laughs> Nine for Rich, ten for Gary Carrington. So that ten dollar skin goes to Rich Lottie. And now another ten dollar skin here in box number two. And Bob Mazer filling that spare. It's interesting, uh, during this stretch in which Bob and Rich have been dominating, uh, Rich Lottie finished second the first three weeks. He was on as a double strike. He had a double strike last week as well. <laughs> Bob Mazur for another spare. Yes! Great <laughs> shot. <laughs> well, they've started again, haven't they? They certainly have. They're kind of getting real relaxed here. Like <laughs> I said, the, the close of last week's show, they might be sitting in our seats one of these weeks. <laughs> they have done everything else that I've asked them. Cameron on strike. Gary Carrington. Bit of a thin hit, but he carries it nicely. And over on lane 29, Rich Lottie, or rather, uh, Rich Clark, leaves the 3, 6, 9, and 10. First Gary Carrington for the spare. So that means Rich Lottie has taken another $10 skin with the strike. No luck, Rich. Good try. And 
out of 10 for Rich Clark. I wonder if Rich Waddy is getting tired. He's thrown two balls so far in the match. <laughs> for the triple strike. No, nope, oh, off no. target, and just two on the fill. Bob Mazur is working on his second spare in a row. That's a seven drop. Oh boy. So it's really uh, negating the, the value of that double strike now with a two fill on the first ball and four on the second and just a six box, so it's only 42 pins with the double strike. But it's good enough to win him two skins. What I started to say about Rich Lotti was his first three weeks he was here, he finished second. The last three weeks he's been first. And you can see Bob Mazer only two spares and yet he is in the lead over Rich Lotti. indicator of how important that first ball is after you throw a double strike. It's just like filling any other mark. The first ball is very, very critical. Gary Carrington trying to take care of some loose wood on uh, lane 29, and now we're set to go. Rich Clark. Left-hander, right in the pocket. 3-6 left for Rich Clark for his first mark, possibly. Gary Carrington on a spare through the middle. Rich now for his first mark, and he's got it. And that's going to win the skin unless Gary can convert the spread eagle. So that'll be a $10 skin for Rich Clark with the spare. And Gary Carrington settles for the eight box. So it's the Rich L and the Rich C. They've got all the skins so far. $15 skin now here in the fourth. Bob Mazur. Oh my. Six, ten. Four ten, I should say. Oh, Rich Lottie. Oh, should have. Oh, he does. That's three strikes out of four boxes for Rich Lottie now. I think Rich might have been a little upset about that last box. Maybe. <laughs> Bob Mazur takes a nine. You heard uh, Gary Carrington you match one of these up and have a carryover. That's what he's talking about. And there it is. A little ten pin, a little testy, but finally goes. Well, Gary now. Looking to restart after just a four fill on that first mark he had. And both bowlers looking for the strike and the carryover. Gary so just up, missing. It'll be up to Rich Clark. This is on a spare for Rich, and he's full also, just three. And big spare for Gary Carrington on the four horsemen. Made that look routine. Rich Clark needs a bailout ball here. So that's a $15 skin for Rich Lottie with the strike. Rich Clark settles for a seven. Hey, guess what? Rich Lottie and Bob Mazur are first and second. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Rich Lottie's up uh, ho-hum working on another strike. But what kind of a score would he have now if he had thrown like a seven or an eight on that yeah. first ball, the last box? It's Bob Major crossing over. Look out! He wants that five to go. Five ten. Okay. Um. I think we had a pin missing on uh, on Bob Mazur's, uh box, or uh, th this frame. We'll have to uh, check that during the next break, and since this is the fifth box, if, uh, if there was indeed a pin missing, we'll have Bob re-roll that, that box. 
Oh, now we've got a problem on lane 20. I'll tell you what, we'll take a break right now anyway because we're having a technical problem on lane 29, so we'll take the break and return here on Candlepin Skins in a minute. All right, we're back in Londonderry. We've straightened away all our technical problems. We did have a pin missing on Bob Mazur's fifth box, so we had him re-rack and roll another fifth box, and he rolled a 10. So the 10 is good at the moment. Gary Carrington might have something to say about that with this ball. 6-10 for spare and the skin. No, no, he needs the six pin, or Rich needs the one, three, and seven for a carryover. Not rich. Carry over for Gary. Yes. Yep. So that brings us to the end of five. We will keep right on going here. We had uh, a couple of things happen at once there. There's, uh, the fine staff here at Londonderry Bowling Center took care of the uh, technical problem, and we're back on the mark here. So this uh, six box will now be worth $30. Rich Lottie. A little full, but he carries out the 6-10. That helps. 4-7 left. Good oh, luck for Bob Mazur. Yeah. Well, he carried another one, but he's still got the two pin left. Rich Lottie takes the spare, though. That's his fourth mark. Ten box for Bob Mazur. Gary Carrington has marked both times here on lane 30, so he'll try for the hat trick here. Just missing the head pin, but not too, too bad. No, considering Rich Clark is bid for a strike, not going to happen, so one of these bowlers has to convert a spare for another carryover. And neither of them have an easy shot. We did not have many carryovers uh, last week. Biggest carryover we had was $50 last week. Gary Carrington for the 110. No. no. And Rich Clark has a tough piece of wood out in front of his. That being the 610. Oh, yeah, he got it. Rich needed the mark, too. It's a nine for Gary. So that's a carryover, and already we're here at a $55 carryover now for box number seven. Rich Lottie on a spare. He ran, tried to run that one down, but he got just four. Well, five, eight, and nine for Bob Mazur. Wow, that seven pin looked like it jumped up in the air and came yep. right back down again. New, no, no conversion for Bob Mazur. Ooh, and that's a six box for Rich Lottie. That's his second six box. Of Feast that. or famine for uh, Rich Lottie. Ten for Bob, so he gains four in count, and he's now within seven of the lead all of a sudden. Big ball for Rich Clark, a low man in the totem pole right now, but he's working on a spare. If he were to throw a big fill into the spare, he'd be right back in it. Well, there's eight. Well, there's Clark. Good position here if he were to pick up a spare. He's got it. Might be good enough for the skin. Let's see. It is. That's a $55 skin for Rich Clark. So Rich Clark and Rich Lottie have won all the money to this point. It's like your name has to be Rich if you're going <laughs> to win any skins this first game. And, and things tightening up, as you say. Absolutely. Rich Clark low with 75, but he's working on a spare. Gary Carrington at 77, 83 for Bob Mazur, and a leader right now, anyways. Rich Lottie with 90. Wow. 
I was going to say, it might be time for Rich to throw another strike. He hasn't <laughs> thrown one in like three boxes. <laughs> for the spare, though. No. Wow. Well, Bob Mazur opened this match with two marks, but he's been open since, and he'll take a nine. Rich Lottie will also take nine. So this $25 skin in the eighth wide open for Rich Clark and Gary Carrington here. Gary will fire first. Oh, right in the pocket. No doubt about that one. Right from the moment it left his hand. And Rich Clark won't be able to match it, so that's a $25 skin for Gary Carrington and a powerful first ball that time. All three of his marks are over on lane 30. Spare for Rich Clark. Three in a row for Rich Clark, but the skin goes to Gary Carrington. Puts him tie with Bob Mazur for second. Gary Carrington close behind, as you can see, 87 with the bonus ball or bonus two balls are coming on the strike, and Rich Lottie leading still with 99. Ooh, that was dead in the one-two pocket. Seven, eight left. Good. A couple pieces of wood, though. Come on, give me the extra. This ninth box worth $25. Bob Mazur can't buy a spare leaf. Oh no, Rich needed to catch a piece of the wood and didn't quite do it. Tried to be real fine there. I might have taken both pieces. Let's see what's happened this time when he, if he hits that wood next to the nut, he's not going to. Well, we'll never know. 10 for both. And now Rich Clark and Gary Carrington step up, both working on marks. Threatening to pass both of these bowlers. Both Rich, Clark, uh, Rich uh, Lottie and Bob Mazur. Oh, oh wow. wow. That is a three fill for Rich Clark. And the three are the, the one, the two, and the nine. Figure that out. And Gary Carrington looks like he's going to have a spare leave. Oh, oh how about it? Try. Oh, my. Oh, what an effort. This would win the skin if Gary converts this for the mark, and he does. Spare on strike. And it's a nine for Rich Clark, so $25 more for Gary Carrington. Ooh, and Gary will probably take the lead in the match with the fill on that spare in the ninth. Very, very close here again. Bob Mazur leaves the diamond. Well, he's been all over the head pin. This is the best lead that he's had, and no one likes to shoot at the diamond. Rich Lottie will shoot at the two, four, seven, six, ten. Piece of wood behind the two and the four, which should help. But there's a spare for Bob Mazer. Well deserved. Well, this will be the lowest string that Rich Lottie has thrown in a number of weeks. But don't forget about what was it about five or six weeks ago? Rich Lottie threw an 89 in the opening game and came back with a 145 to continue along. So. He's not in too bad shape here at 118. He's going to be right near the top. Spare with a six fill for Bob Mazur, and that ties him with Rich Lottie at 118. This 10th box, of course, worth $50. Bob's spare leads it right now. Gary Carrington now working on his spare in the ninth. This to take the lead in the match. Oh, that's because I pinned well. Yeah. Oh, I think Gary expected only a couple on that, and he ended up with seven. Rich Clark back on the head pin again. This line will better leave. Three and the six. Spare to have the skin, remember. Gary took a shot at it. And now Rich. And he does have the skin in the tenth, so we'll have a carry over to game two, and Rich Clark is going to tighten things up a little bit more. Gary Carrington with a 10 for a 124. Rich Clark at 114 plus a ball. We could very well have every, all the bowlers within six pins here after this ball is thrown. Yep, that's exactly what's going to happen. A six fill for Rich Clark, a 120. So how about that? 
two 118s, a 120, and a 124. And we're going to have a $60 carryover skin to start game two when we return in a minute. Very close match, total pinfall, and everybody but Bob Mays are on the board with skins winning so far. Rich Clark leading the way. Four skins to this point with $65, and uh, Rich Lottie now will start game two. Rich finding himself, uh, Rich and Bob, both finding themselves in a position to come from behind here as they are, in essence, tied for third at this point with 118. But not that far behind. The scores are close, and look out. Rich Lottie almost with another strike. Eat it up. Everything but the 10. It's a situation, make up your mind before you throw it, either at the pin or use the wood. He'll use it, and he takes it. Not really much sense to try and fit the ball in that small area there. Too many things could go wrong. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Bob Mazur now. Bob had two marks to start the first game and then a mark in the tenth, and that was it. That piece of wood may roll all the way back to him. <laughs> but he's got a spare opportunity here. Oh. No. Oh, that wood started to come back, too. Remember, this is a $60 carryover skin, as we had uh, the carryover in the tenth. So Bob will have to settle for a ten. Let's see what happened on the spare effort. Looked like he was high enough on the wood, but just twisted the wood away from the pins and watched that. <laughs> Almost came back for a second try at the 10 pin. Don't forget, tomorrow at noon here on the Winds of New England, week two of our annual mixed doubles event on Stars and Strikes. It'll be Kevin Davis and Glennis Mangano going for their second straight win as they'll face Dan Broder and Janet Hawk. That should be a terrific match. Uh, Kevin Davis and Glennis Mangano with a big 419 last week. Yeah, terrific bowling last week by those two. Rich Clark for the spare? No. So it'll be up to Gary Carrington to either win this skin or take it away from Rich Lottie. Eight. Again, if you're wondering how we determine who bowls in the cleanup spot here, the fourth spot, which is to your advantage or disadvantage, depending on how you look at it. I think most bowlers would like to go up there knowing what they have to do. Among the bowlers who qualify in the roll-off, whoever is highest seed gets that last spot. Gary Carrington finished third in the roll-off with Rich Clark fourth, so as a result of that, Gary takes this uh, last spot in the order. And he drops a solid nine leaving the 10 pin and this to have and carry over the skin. Ooh, I thought it was going to slide off. But Boy, I really thought he had a strike on that first oh, ball. Absolutely. <laughs> Those nine pins were out of there in a hurry. So it's another carry over. We're up to $70 now here in box two. By the way, speaking of the roll off, this most recent roll off for candle pin skins was held at the Lakeside Lanes in Manchester. So thanks to John Baldessaro and the whole gang there, Red Ganyon and, and the rest for helping us out with the scores and all the particulars. All right, come on, get him up. Well, after all said and done, Rich has got a seven drop on the spare, one, three, and seven left, and a piece of wood in front of the seven. Oh, and he slides by the head pin. Interesting too, Dan, uh, on this final roll off, uh, I don't know as we've mentioned this before, but generally on the final roll-offs, when they're held, there are so many bowlers. Uh, they're usually somewhere between 70 and 90 bowlers in that final roll-off trying to get the spots to get on television. And so they bowl in shifts. They don't all bowl, at the, all bowl at the same time. And in this particular instance, there were three shifts at Lakeside and five bowlers from the last shift qualified. Wow. Um, the high score before the last shift was Bob Kelly with a 664, but Alex Pendleton matched that score in the last shift, and then four other guys passed him. Oh, great shot. Bob Mazur with the spare, making 
his statement about the $70 skin. All right, Rich, go get it now. <laughs> Gary Carrington <laughs> urging Rich to make a spare, I'm sure. <laughs> to have it. Oh, he takes the strike instead. <laughs> so now Gary will have to match that in order to carry this over. All right, Gary. Go to him. <laughs> and Bob Mazur kind of chimes right. in now. <laughs> now everybody rooting for Gary to throw a strike. Except, Except Rich Clark. Rich, right. <laughs> Gary working on a spare also. Nearly had a strike last time, and this time he's through the middle. Just three. So that's a $70 skin for Rich Clark. Get up. Oh, what a try. Oh, almost. Nine box for Gary. See, Rich Clark takes the uh, largest money skin so far, a $70 haul right there, and $10 box now here in the third. Rich Lottie is right in the pocket again. Leaves the five pin. He's got it. Spare in the third for Rich Lottie. Rich is the uh, all-time leader here in the relatively short history of Candlepin Skins with his seventh consecutive week. Bob Mazur is just one week behind him. Bob gets eight on his mark. Down. Kicks out the four pin, leaves himself the three six, trying to match the spear by Rich Lottie. No. The 10. So the spare is good for the moment for Rich Lottie. Now Rich Clark working on a strike. Rich, the left-hander from Bedford, New Hampshire. He and his wife, uh, Cynthia Ann, have two children. Oh, that's a double, double strike. strike. I was just about to mention that he and his wife Cynthia Ann have two children, Lauren and Brandon, and there's the double strike for the two kids. You people have bowling aspirations. That is a fellow that just threw that strike's only been bowling for like five Get years. Out. Is that right? That's right. All right, Gary, work it out. Yeah. He seems to have taken to it quite well. Well, <laughs> taught me a lesson the other night. Of course, you know, I took it easy. I mean, he's just a young kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Old enough to beat you, apparently, though. Uh, yes. <laughs> Severely beaten. That's what it was. <laughs> well, Rich takes himself, Rich Clark, that is, takes himself another skin. This one worth $10. As Gary has to settle for the 10. The scores are really close. Rich Lottie on a spare. Oh, again in the pocket. This time, Brooklyn side, another nine pin drop. Unfortunately, right now it's taking strikes to win a skin. Trying to make it two spears in a row, oh, yes. Yeah. Three out of four in this game for Rich Lottie after he had a brief uh, dry spell at the end of game one. Don't let up, yeah. Bob Mazur now. Bob is the only bowler not to win any skins yet in this hour. Bob looking for a couple of those strikes from last week. This time, no wood to help. Three, six, ten on the right. Four, seven left. Trying to split. Almost. Good, good effort, but no spare. And he takes the ten. Well, will Rich Clark throw another strike for a possible third skin in a row? Working on the double. More important, as we can saw last, or the first game last, uh, first game today, I should say, with Rich Lottie. And again, you got to make that first ball count. Just four for Rich Clark. Oh, oh yes. made that one count. Big spare there. Bailing out. Also, 
put Gary Carrington in a position where he doesn't have to worry about having the skin, but he can win it with a strike. It's a $15 skin here in the fourth, and it will carry over. Rich Clark is taking the lead now. Here, Gary dropped that one, it sounded like. But all four bowlers still in the thick of things. Gives Gary Carrington 166 total tie with Bob Mazur. And then you see Rich Clark 182 and Rich Lottie 174. And both Riches are working on the spares. Rich Lottie fills his with eight and a chance for another. His fifth box worth $30. Rich for the spare. No. Oh, yes. Yes. No, he stole it. <laughs> no, yes. <laughs> he missed it, but he got it anyway. What's well, happened here? A little piece of wood came back. <laughs> wow. And everybody else gives him the business. <laughs> <laughs> Three marks in a row for Rich Lottie. Here's Bob Mazur. Crossing over. All right, run it, Bob, run it. Well, Bob may have a setup here. Looks like that wood will carry the, the three and five. Can it carry the 10 as well? Let's see. Not quite. Uh, Bob does not throw the ball particularly hard, and that was one instance where a hard thrower might have benefited. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Rich Clark is working on a series of two strikes and a spare, but can't let up. Rich Clark works as the manager of the family business, Clark's Farm, for the Manchester area. And Rich does a lot of his bowling at both the King Lanes and at Boutwell's Bowling Center, where he beats up on Dan Murphy on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> a nine fill on the spare. Looking for his fourth mark in a row, and he's got it. And once again, Gary Carrington will step up knowing that if he strikes, he can win the skin. If not, it'll carry over again. Yeah, help him two ways, win the skin and also get him back in the match here. He's at 166. Hey. Looks pretty good. Oh, oh look at no. that. Wow. <laughs> well, he needs the mark, as you said, Dan. So regardless of what happens with the skin, that's an important spare for Gary. So three guys have spares up in the fifth. And we'll be back to see how this all turns out here on Candlepin Skins. Score's still close. We'll be back. Well, Rich Lottie has three marks in a row. He's working on a spare. In the pocket again, this time a little thinner. Three consecutive marks for Rich and he hasn't won a skin in that stretch. So his string of three in a row is broken. And he'll take a nine. Rich right now in the lead, as you see with total pinfall, but that doesn't count Rich Clark's spare fill, plus his sixth box coming up. So this is still very, too, uh, very early to call things here, as it usually is. Oh boy, he just moved that two pin off the spot, which would make this shot it's a little more difficult. Long. Well, he does have the help of the wood behind, which may hold the ball around a little bit. Let's see. Oh yeah. Very nice. Great shot. Put the ball right in between the wood and the two pin, and that's all he needed to do. I get some marks. <laughs> you heard Bob, he said, I gotta get some marks, and he does need marks. Rich Clark working on spare. Just four. And he can't really afford to let up either. This match, as Doug said, is very much in doubt. Oh, 
Well, it'll be up to Gary Cairns and either throw a strike to win the skin or a spare to carry it over again. Bob Mazer leads with his mark in the sixth frame, that being a spare. And this is a $45 skin here in the sixth. Well, Gary with the fill will at least give himself an opportunity to take over third place, oh, but look boy. at that right One through five. the center. Oh, my. One in the five. So give that $45 skin to Bob Mazur. That'll be his first. Get back on the board. And Gary Carrington takes an eight. So let's check those bottom line scoreboards there. You see 186, Gary and Bob Mazur tied for third, but Bob has a spare working. The seventh box now worth $25, and Rich Lottie is off the head pin for the first time in a long while. And he misses it again. Still there. Ten for Rich, 98 through seven. Well, this is a big ball for Bob Mazur. You heard him say he needed marks. That was plural. <laughs> <laughs> so he needs a big fill and another one if he can put it up. Crosses oh, over and look, look at, at the three pin. <laughs> look at Bob. He moved the three pin right over in front of the six, making this shot even tougher. This would have been a spare leave without Really? <laughs> Right where the pin would have been. Wow, that is a tough break. Takes the nine. Wow. No marks yet here in the seventh. Rich Clark. Look out. Five and the seven, and it looks like he's going to have no usable wood. Let's see. Come back. Now he's been bowling. Of course, I get to see him on a weekly basis. He's been bowling extremely well, so cut any of these shots out. He's liable to make one of these. And Not this time. Slides by on the left. The ten box is looking real good right now. Well, again, Gary Carrington needs marks for pinfall, but if he gets a mark here or any sort, he'll win the skin as well. And again, Gary is right through the center. This time he got a bit more of a break. And I don't know about the two and the three. He's got a slight angle on that piece of wood to the left, but this is still going to be a very difficult shot. Yeah, he'll, he'll go left, of obviously, and just better hope he doesn't cap it and leave both of them. Then there's going to be a tough carryover. Oh, he nice made it. Shot. Terrific shot. Well, Gary got robbed when he punched out two on his last spare right through the middle. He very nearly did it again. But that time it worked out for him, and he gets the spare for the $25 skin. And still not out of the match. Three boxes remaining. This eighth box now also worth $20. Two, four, seven, and the six for Rich Lottie. No. He gets those pins to come back somehow. <laughs> well, Rich Lottie is the guy that both Bob Mazur and Gary Carrington are chasing right now because he's in second. So him leaving that eighth box open gives Bob and Gary a chance to make a further run here. Bob Mazur, right in the pocket for a strike, his first of the day. What a time for it. Well, it's just a matter of time, because Bob has been hitting the head pen. He's, well, you saw the last box, the pin moved on him. He hasn't had anything really to shoot at. That time in the 1-3 pocket, Rich Clark. He had a double strike earlier in this game. Oh, and he takes it away. 
spot, baby. Good His spot. first mark since four in a row earlier Good in the spot. game, and we'll have a carry over Good here in the spot. eighth. With that strike, that just might have uh, secured Rich's spot, depending on what he does in the fill. <laughs> he's leading the match, so Gary Carrington and Bob Mazur would have to climb over each other plus Rich Lottie to get to Rich Clark. So. This is an important box for Gary Carrington. He gets an eight fill and a bit of a turn on this wood. The two and the seven. For another mark, watch out, and he Whoa. gets it. Just capping the wood. And that'll keep Gary in the game, and of course we already had the carryover, so this ninth box is worth $50. Slotty got to help the cause. He needs to put a mark up. Uh oh. Off to the right. Got a nice Ooh, break, though. Look big at that. break. Just the triangle in the left hand corner. Four, seven, and eight. Yes. Oh, yes. That's a very critical mark for Rich Lottie. These four yeah. scores right now, are, they're all within one mark of each other, basically. Sign of a pretty tough bowler when you get a break and then you cash in on it, and that's exactly what he did in that instance. Bob Mazer working on that big strike. This time, two full. Bob trying to get as much as he can on the strike, he'll take seven. And a nine in the box, 109 through nine. He put some nine pins, as you can see, behind Rich Lottie, but Rich is working on a spare. So whatever happens, Bob Mays is going to need a mark or two. All right, Rich Clark and Gary Carrington both working on marks here. Very critical. Rich Clark with a mix. He was working on a strike, he carries eight. That wood is going to be in play, it appears. I need it right up. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have Cindy go check it, but I'm sure it's in play. We could pretty much uh, had a great angle there with our camera heading down the lane that you could almost see the deadwood line right in front of the pin. It is in play. It's really not a factor in the shot right now. And he's got it for the spare. Spare on strike for Rich Lo for Rich Clark. Well, that should put him in. Also causes the possible carryover unless Gary Karen can throw a strike. And for Gary to catch Rich Lottie, he needs a strike. Well, you would figure he'd, he'd need a mark of some kind just to give himself a chance, and it's not going to be easy with this fill, or this three, leave rather. Three, six, four, seven. Well, our last carryover skin of the day is going to be worth $100. As we come down to the final box, it's an 8 for Gary, 104. And a check on the scores here. Now, keep in mind, Rich Lottie and Rich Clark each have spares working, and they are in first and second. So they have the advantage right now. $100 skin here to wrap things up. Rich Lottie can't afford to make a mistake. And he drops a good fill. A tough, tough leave to convert to another spare, but he does get the eight fill on the, on the spare. Well, Rich will be back in the 130s, which is where he's been most of the time. Well, with that fill on the spare, Bob, Mazer or Gary Carrington are going to have to throw double strikes to catch him. Yep. Because obviously Rich will have a lock on second unless either Bob or Gary throws a double, and it appears Rich Clark, well, all Rich Clark has to do is keep the ball in the lane to be the overall winner. So Bob Mazer in need of a strike, and oh. that close. So that eliminates Bob Mazer. It's all up to Gary Carrington now. So Bob's streak will end at six weeks in a row. And that will go as a nine box as he lobbed it into the channel. Let us not forget the $100 skin here, though. <laughs> That's right. Two nines right now. <laughs> Bowlers can't handle all the pressure of that $100 skin. Here's Clark working on a spare. 
lazy. He comes up short. Yeah, a little lazy with that ball. A little bit behind himself. Wouldn't this be something if we <laughs> carry over with nines? Oh, my. Well, Rich has already guaranteed himself the number one spot, so he doesn't have to worry about that. But I'm sure he doesn't want to get a three box either. I'll tell you. Oh, boy. oh he did oh. it. Oh, my. A three box, but he is already safely advanced. He has already locked up the number one spot. So Gary Carrington needs a double strike to advance, but nine is good for the skin right now. Well, nine is the carry. Nine is the carryover, right. right? So if Gary just gets a ten, he'll take home an extra hundred bucks. This skin is gone. <laughs> I'll tell you. There it is. This skin is gone. <laughs> Not only is it gone, watch out. Gary throws another one, he's still in it here. So that last $100 will go to Gary Carrington. There is no way Gary Carrington is gonna let a $100 skin go by with a nine box. <laughs> <laughs> so regardless of what happens, Gary's gonna be our big money winner for the day, but he needs another strike to stay alive. Let's see, let's see. Oh my. Gave it a run. He really did, didn't he? So that'll put Rich Lottie in. So Rich Lottie and Rich Clark. A nine fill, a 123 for Gary Carrington. 247. Not quite enough. He finishes third by six pins. The Riches. Clark and Lottie will advance. We'll be back to wrap it up on Candlepin Skins in a minute. And welcome back to the Londonderry Bowling Center. Oh, another terrific match here on Candlepin Skins. Uh, the rain finally over for Bob Mazur, but Rich Lottie moves on. He'll be making his eighth straight appearance next week, and he'll be joined by the other Rich, Rich Clark. That's right. Both of them bowled terrifically, and you'd think. I knew that the skin was going to go with Gary Carrington, <laughs> but uh, a guy like him, he's dangerous. He's liable to throw that double strike, and he could be coming back. All right, let's show the total pinfall just uh, in case you missed the... The last scores there, Rich Clark by six pins over Rich Lottie to take the uh, top two spots to advance next week. Gary Carrington missing by just six pins and Bob Mazur finishing fourth this time. The Skins prize money winnings, Gary Carrington the big winner with that $100 skin to finish up. And Rich Clark not too far behind. All four guys get on the board. And uh, Bob Mazur, the, the stretch is finally over. Uh, six weeks in a row and it finally ended today. Well, I was a couple of weeks ago, I was fortunate to manage to finish second. I got a couple of lucky breaks on some balls, some spares that gave me a chance to come back. And uh, today, the luck just ran <laughs> out. Uh, well, you had a real nice run. Uh, boy, it seemed like every time you needed something to happen, you did. You even had the strike ball working last week. Yeah, <laughs> and I had it working this week, too. But unfortunately, Rich, uh, every time I got one, canceled <laughs> it. But uh, I'd really like to ch uh, thank Channel 50 for putting on the show for the bowlers, uh, for guys like myself to take the game serious. It's nice to know that we have a place to go and show our talent. Well, we appreciate your efforts and your being here and all the rest of the guys as well. Thanks very much, thank Bob. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations for that great run. We appreciate your being here. Thank you. And uh, that will about do it here on Candlepin Skins, except for Dan to uh, uh, just remind everyone that coming up next week, Rich Lottie will make his eighth straight appearance. He'll be joined by Rich Clark, and uh, they will be joined by Bob Kelly and Alex Pendleton next week. You sure it's eight now? Because I, I can't count. <laughs> uh, he'll be back, and Rich Clark, uh, and it, right down through the lineup, there's some good names coming on, and and uh, should be some some exciting bowling next week. Don't forget tomorrow at noon here on the Winds of New England, we'll be over at the Park Place Lanes in Wyndham for the second week of our mixed doubles tournament. We hope you'll be with us for that. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good weekend, everybody. Hey!